what are the net costs and benefits of what we're doing. These are the energy facts, and this is the data, and here it is through Caltech, through a respected university that is willing to partner with us, but that's not free. And I think that's one of the challenges, the biggest challenge that we're gonna have is how do we take a group of 14, 15 people here tonight and then go out and build on that and bring a coalition together of like-minded people that care about the environment as our number one priority. And I think we all do. We all care about the environment as our number one priority. And oh, by the way, we produce this extremely valuable resource that everybody needs, that everybody uses every single day in their lives. So why are we letting environmental activists come in to Kern County like two weeks ago for this California Forward event that the majors will sponsor financially, I don't know why, but they will come into Bakersfield and lecture us about what we're doing and our livelihood and our way of life and our ability to bring $128,000 a year jobs to blue collar workers that need second chances, that have been to prison, but oil and gas is willing to give them a second chance. Not solar, not wind, but oil and gas. And those are the kinds of messages that I'm passionate about. And I've been active on social media, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, but likes are a fleeting light. I mean, it's kind of cool to see a bunch, you know, I'll get 100,000 people that see a post, which is great. I have a media channel that I can push our data through and our scientific facts through that's already established. But if we're not doing something in conjunction with universities, I don't think we're going to get a serious look from the regulators. They need the data, and I think there exists an opportunity for Democrats and Republicans, but we need to give them a scientific document. We can't continue to play reaction game where they want to say 3,200 foot setbacks and then, oh, we have to sign a referendum that pauses that you know, mandate on our industry. No, we need to tell people the port is the single largest source of pollution and here's why. And we need to go out and charter a boat and we need to track a tanker for two weeks with a FLIR infrared camera that shows the emissions coming off of the tanker. And then we need to do a full life cycle analysis of the emissions coming off of that tanker, trace back to the loss of habitat in the Ecuadorian Amazon and the amount of vegetation and plant life and tree life and we, we say we're going to go sequester carbon through the, <laughs> through the rainforest and we're ripping it up. We need to tie this all back to a full life cycle analysis of why foreign crude is actually the worst type of crude for the California market and then we need to present the opposite case, UC Berkeley, we know, is littered with groupthink, with propaganda, with this mentality of, I'm going to design a study that shows why we need to phase out oil and gas in California, and I don't care about the science. And that's what Berkeley does. Well, what we can do is say, this is the science, and there's a whole number of institutions that will support the true science, and what does that mean for our community? And I think what we're lacking is just a collective spirit behind that. And it starts with something like this. It starts with just getting together, sharing ideas. I, you know, some of the great conversations I've had with Gracie of getting involved with, uh, you know, producers and, and, and women that are in the industry. And, and she has another idea. So the call to action tonight is really please give me feedback on the materials you've seen give us you know information ideas ways to involve everybody because we need to get out of this comfort zone of our own industry you know we're under constant attack 
and the mindset has been let's just protect what we have let's keep protecting what we have but we need to be proactive we need to go out and if we are i don't believe there's a transition i believe there's an integration of renewables and oil and gas and i believe that we have a huge opportunity through 2045 beyond that 2100 i don't think anything's going away for the next 50 60 70 years so why why are we removing ourselves from the seat at the table